This is a revision video for quantitative chemistry, looking at how we can use the mass of one mole of a substance to calculate how many moles there are in a sample. If you haven't already, I'd recommend watching the introduction to moles video and also the relative formula mass video. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate the mass of a certain number of moles of a substance. You should be able to calculate how many moles there are in a sample if you know its mass, and you should be able to calculate the number of particles in a sample given its mass. As we saw in a previous video, because atoms are so tiny, if we were actually to use the number of atoms in a sample, we would have to deal with some really, really huge numbers. So one way that chemists get around this is to use a kind of multipack called a mole. In the same way that you understand that the word dozen means 12, or the word million means a one with six zeros after it, you need to understand that when we talk about a mole of something, we mean 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, and that number is often called Avogadro's number. It doesn't matter whether the particles in question are atoms, or ions, or molecules, or electrons. If there are one mole of them, there are always 6.02 times 10 to the 23. If you look at an element on the periodic table, the larger of the two numbers on the periodic table square is the element's relative atomic mass. This is the mass of one mole of that substance, on a scale where the mass of carbon-12 is exactly 12 grams. So if I took one mole of lithium, remember that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms, those 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms altogether would have a mass of 7 grams. And if I took one mole of aluminium, that would have a mass of 27 grams. And if I took one mole of titanium, it would have a mass of 48 grams. If you know how many moles of a particular element you have, we can use this to calculate the mass of the sample. So we've already said that one mole of lithium has a mass of 7 grams. Therefore, two moles of lithium will have a mass of 2 times 7, which is 14 grams. If one mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams, then three moles of carbon will have a mass of three times 12, which is 36 grams. It's also possible for us to have partial moles. This confuses a lot of people, but think of it like a million. It wouldn't confuse you to say that there were half a million people living in a particular city. It's entirely reasonable for us to have half a mole, or in this instance, 0.4 moles. So if one mole of aluminium weighs 27 grams, we're expecting 0.4 moles to weigh a little less than half that. 0.4 times 27 is 10.8 grams. 0.05 moles of titanium, if one mole of titanium weighs 48 grams, has a mass of 2.4 grams. And 0.3 moles of uranium has a mass of 71.4 grams. In each instance, we're multiplying the relative atomic mass by the number of moles given in the question. This doesn't just apply to elements. We can use the same system for compounds too. But in order to do so, we need to calculate the relative formula mass. This is the number that we get when we add together all of the relative atomic masses of all of the atoms in a particular compound. So for instance, for carbon dioxide, I'd need to multiply one by 12 because there's one atom of carbon per molecule and each one has a mass of 12, and then two lots of 16 because there are two oxygen atoms to give me a relative formula mass of 44 grams per mole. If you're not already confident calculating relative formula mass, I'd go watch the video that explains how to do this. But if you are, then pause the video here and quickly work out what the relative formula mass of the remaining four compounds are. Hopefully that wasn't too challenging, as these are quite easy compounds. So for water, you should have an answer of 18 grams per mole. For methane, 16 grams per mole. For ethanol, 46 grams per mole. And for ethanoic acid, 60 grams per mole. We're now going to use these relative formula masses in our next calculation. We're going to carry out the exact same operation that we went through before, only this time we're going to give you a calculation to help. The mass of a sample is equivalent to the relative formula mass of the molecule we're looking at, multiplied by the number of moles of that molecule. This can be shortened to mass is Mr. Mole. And to help you remember, here's Mr. Mole having his mass confirmed by a scale. For each one of these calculations, we're going to use the relative formula masses that we just worked out in the previous section. 
Now remember, mass equals Mr. Mole. So we need to multiply the relative formula mass in the yellow box by the number of moles. So 44 times 2 is 88 grams. Remember, these answers are masses, so you need to be giving your answer in grams. 3 times 18 is 54 grams. 0.4 times 16 is 6.4 grams. 0.05 times 46 is 2.3 grams. And 0.3 times 60 is 18 grams. Just like in physics, you need to be able to rearrange this equation to make something else the subject. So rather than being told the number of moles and then working out the mass, you need to be told the mass and be able to work out how many moles that is. And this is true whether we're talking about an atom where it's AR or whether we're talking about a molecule or a compound where it's MR. In order to remove that MR from the right hand side of the equation, I'm going to need to divide it. And whatever I do to the right hand side, I do to the left hand side as well. So now here's a rearranged version of the equation, which I can use to work out the number of moles of a substance. To work out the number of moles of atoms in a sample of lithium, I'm using relative atomic mass rather than relative formula mass, but functionally they're the same as each other. So I'm going to do mass divided by relative atomic mass, 1.05 divided by 7. And that gives me an answer of 0.15 moles. If I do the same for the next question, I'm doing the mass of 5.04 divided by the relative atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, and I get an answer of 0.42 moles. If that makes sense, pause the video now and see if you can work through the rest of the questions on your own. 35.1 grams of aluminium contains 1.3 moles of aluminium atoms. 206.4 grams of titanium contains 4.3 moles of titanium atoms. 357 grams of uranium contains 1.5 moles of uranium. 0.81 grams of hydrogen is an easy one because the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, so that's of course 0.81 moles. And finally, 8.8 .8 grams of oxygen contains 0.55 moles of oxygen atoms. We can use the same process with compounds too, but first you need to calculate the relative formula mass of each compound. So we start off with 252 grams of glucose. The mass of one mole of glucose, if I add up those six carbon atoms with a mass of 12, the 12 hydrogen atoms with a mass of one, and the six oxygen atoms with a mass of 16, is 180 grams per mole. Then I'm going to do mass divided by that MR. So 252 divided by 180. And that gives me a total of 1.4 moles. Pause the video and have a go at the next four. So the ethanoic acid has a relative formula mass of 60 and 54 divided by 60 is 0.9 moles. The ethanol has a relative formula mass of 46 and 377.2 divided by 46 is 8.2 moles. Then we've got 92 and 23 divided by 92 is 0.25 moles. And finally, glycine has a relative formula mass of 75 which means our sample contains 0.04 moles. Finally, we're going to think back to our multi-pack. Occasionally, the exam board are going to ask you not just how many moles there are in a particular sample, but how many atoms that is, or how many molecules that is. So now we need to go back to Avogadro's number. We've got two very similar questions here, one asking us about an element, and one asking us about a compound. For both questions, my first step is going to be to work out the number of moles. In pretty much every quantitative chemistry question, that's the first thing you want to be doing. So in 10.5 grams of lithium, there'll be 10.5 divided by 7 moles. That's 1.5 moles of lithium atoms. And then I know that each mole is a multipack containing 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So 1.5 multiplied by that Avogadro's number gives me 9.03 times 10 to the 23 atoms. For the second part of my question, I'm going to go through the same process, but in order to work out the number of moles, I need the relative formula mass first. So, one lot of 12, because there's one carbon in carbon dioxide, and two lots of 16, because there are two oxygens, gives me a relative formula mass of 44. 484 divided by 44 gives me 11 moles. And then 11 multiplied by Avogadro's number 
gives me an answer of 6.622 times 10 to the 24 molecules. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you're finding this quantitative chemistry series of videos useful. The best thing you can do with these questions is practice, practice, practice. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you're finding them useful and don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.